Hi everyone, welcome to another academic video. This one is all about what happens after you complete your PhD Viva. So hi, if you're new around here, my name is Caroline. I am a UK-based physics lecturer, so I work at a UK university. And part of my job involves supervising PhD students. So I'm either their lead supervisor or their secondary supervisor, and I take them all the way through their, their research PhD to the point where they go in for their PhD Viva. So here in the UK, the process is you work on your research for a number of years. Typically within the science sector, it's three to four years. And at the end of it, you need to submit your thesis document, but you're also going to need to go in for your Viva. And a Viva is an oral exam. Again, it can range in duration from like two to four hours is typical. And during that process, both an internal examiner and an external examiner are going to ask you questions about your research. I think I've done a separate video about what goes on um, and what we look for as internal and external examiners when we are researching, examining our PhD students. Um, so this video is the bit after. So when you've done your PhD and you've done your Viva and hopefully it's gone to plan, what happens next? A quick caveat, I am talking today about the UK system. Now I know other countries, other institutions have different processes for their PhD examinations. Um, sometimes people have to do a presentation in front of a, an audience and defend it very publicly, their research. But I'm talking very much about the UK system today. So that's a closed Viva. You have the researcher, so your PhD applicant, and then you have an internal examiner, so somebody who works at the university who is examining that work, an external examiner, and sometimes a chair. Um, as I said, I'll link to the videos I've made about these different roles in the past, and I might make some more videos in the future to help clarify who does what. But at the end of your Viva, so having been asked lots of questions about your research for, you know, two, three, four hours, at the end of that process, the examiners will make a decision as to whether you have passed. You know, have you defended your research is how we kind of describe it here in the UK. Um, and the outcomes can be that you've passed and there is nothing to change at all. You know, your thesis is, is just perfect and there is no need for any corrections. Um, that does happen uh, and it's amazing when that happens, both for the, the researching PhD student, for the supervisor of that student and for the examiners. But more typically, the outcome will be that you have passed the Viva but that the examiners want you to make some modifications, some corrections to your thesis before it can be finally approved and then accepted into publication within the library system at that university. So this is quite common, you know, to come out of that Viva and to be told that you've passed it, but you've got to do these minor corrections. So what does that actually entail? Different universities will have different timescales. So some universities have a month, some have three months, some have six months, but the examiners who were looking at that thesis will inform the student how long they have to do their corrections. And then the corrections will be sent to the student Either the student will get an annotated copy of their thesis, kind of all marked up with the bits that they need to change or add or amend. Sometimes examiners like to give a list of specific alterations they want to see as a separate document that the student needs to work their way through. And the student will receive that, so they'll either get this annotated thesis or the list of corrections. They'll get a time frame and they'll get official notification from the university that those corrections need to be completed within that time in order for the thesis to be satisfactorily passed. And as a PhD student then, one thing that is a super helpful is as you do these corrections or changes to your, your thesis, to your document, to highlight them. 
You know, so when I, as an external examiner, ask for changes or modifications in somebody's research, it's then so much easier when I go back to see if those things happened to look for highlighted areas within the text. Um, and so what sometimes students do is they take the list of corrections and they actually work through them and they make a note of the page where the correction happened and what the alteration in the text was. And as an examiner, that is amazing because it's just a nice quick way then of checking that the alterations did indeed happen. And usually that responsibility of checking falls often to the internal examiner. And again, I'm talking very much from a science perspective. You know, I'm a physics lecturer, um, so I'm very familiar with the, the physics process of going through a PhD viva. But yeah, often for us, it's the internal examiner who will then get the students amended or updated or modified thesis and have the list of corrections and they'll be the one who'll go through and go, yes, the student did modify that or they adjusted the way they showed that data set or they, they amended the text to reflect somebody else's thinking that was missed out. Because it's all about making sure that that thesis is the best it possibly can be and correct and accurate before it then gets uh, approved and ratified to go into the university kind of archive and to be formally the final version of that document. So it can be quite a bit of work for the student. You know, it, 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 <laughs> you almost go through the viva process, which is stressful. Um, we can talk about this in a future video, but it is a, a stressful experience often going through your PhD viva. Um, a lot of adrenaline, you know, a lot of sleepless nights sometimes beforehand getting ready for it. Then you get told you've passed, but you haven't quite passed. You've passed, but with these minor corrections. And sometimes they're actually major corrections that the examining body want you to do. And I think one thing that I found very useful personally, and that I recommend to my students, is if you get minor corrections, try not to sit on it for too long before actually making those changes. You know, it's quite easy to come out of the viva and almost be like, oh, I've done it, and to collapse and to relax. And then if you leave it too long, it's even more painful and difficult to kind of rev yourself up to make those alterations to your, your document. So, you know, whilst it's still very fresh and you're still very linked to that research and it's very current in your head, I would allocate time to make those amendments, those modifications, so that your thesis then is formally and finally accepted. Because once the examiner has checked your modifications and is happy that you have indeed made those changes, you are then done. You can then submit your final, final version of your thesis into your doctoral training centre or into your university system, your senate house, and that is you finished your PhD. So yeah, when you pass your PhD viva, and if you're going up for one now, all the best, um, you know, is a challenging time often within the PhD, but good luck. When you're going through that PhD viva process, just be aware that once somebody says to you, yes, you've passed, if they say you've passed, but with minor or major corrections, there's actually a bit more work to do before you get awarded your PhD. Um, so let me know if you're a PhD student now going through the process, how are you finding it? Are you looking forward to your viva? Do you do it differently in your country? If you're a supervisor looking after students, you know, are, how do you prepare them for their PhD viva? Um, again, a future video we can do that about how I go through various steps to make sure my PhD students are actually ready for the viva itself. Um, but yeah, let me know, PhD vivers, do you like them? Or, you know, is it something that as the supervisor, you tend not to think about until the student actually gets to that particular point in their research journey? Um, but yeah, leave me a comment. Have a great week, a great week even. Um, keep looking after yourselves and I'll see you next Monday for another academic video. Bye.